Super Mario Land was a big seller for the Game Boy when it launched. Bigger still was the handheld support of Alexei Pajitnov's Tetris, which revolutionized puzzle games. Though Mario and Luigi got cameos in that game's two-player mode, it wouldn't be long before Nintendo made its own contribution to the genre. 1989's Alleyway In the game, Mario uses a bank deposit capsule to play Breakout, occasionally going to a bonus stage featuring bricks arranged into Super Mario Bros. sprites. Alleyway didn't get the positive reception that SML did, though some conceded that it was passable as a Game Boy game. But a better Mario puzzler was on the way. One year later came Dr. Mario. Yes, we can add Doctor to our hero's resume. In the game, Mario has to clear the bottle of three different types of viruses. Yellow weirds, red fevers, and blue chills. You line up the size of colored pills in order to get rid of the viruses. Each pill takes up two blocks on the grid. If four consecutive blocks are filled with the same color, that line is cleared. If a certain virus is in the line that's been cleared, it gets erased as well, and its corresponding sprite gets knocked over. When all viruses of the same color are killed in the bottle, its corresponding sprite vanishes from the magnifying glass. In general, the game fared better critically than Alleyway. Though one magazine unfairly claimed that it was plagiarized and some overprotective parents complained about medicine being a kid's game, most people liked it. It even got a Game Boy port the same year and has since become Nintendo's main puzzle game series. Before we can progress further into the 90s, we need to backtrack a little and talk about Nintendo's competitor, Sega. Sega began life as a Hawaii-based company that relocated to Japan in the 1950s, building stuff like jukeboxes and pinball machines. It entered into the arcade business in the 60s, and found success in the following decades with games like Zaxxon, Outrun, and Space Harrier. In 1986, the company released its own 8-bit console to compete with Nintendo's, the Sega Mark III commonly called the Master System. Despite selling well in Europe and Latin America, the Master System never found much of a market in Japan or the US due to Nintendo's dominance in those countries. In 1988, Sega would release a console made to blow its rival out of the water, the Mega Drive, aka the Genesis. The advertising spared no expense to show that the NES could only produce 8-bit graphics while the Genesis could do twice as much. It was as if owning a Genesis would be like taking an arcade coin-op cabinet home with you. The virtual monopoly the NES held on home gaming was broken. If Nintendo was going to keep going, it would have to step into the 16-bit arena as well. They would do just that with the Super Famicom released internationally as the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. As with its predecessors launched in America, a Mario game would launch with it. 